Eric here is asks, I got an ICOM IC705. I'm thinking of using resonant antennas. Would do you think a QRP tuner would be a good investment or should I just stick it out with antennas that don't need it? I think that a, a small tuner is always a good investment. Uh, QRP tuners, they're, they don't take up much space. Mm -hmm. You know, you could get one that's in a very small package. Even if you're using a resonant antenna, what the tuner will let you do is say you've got a 40 meter antenna that you've got tuned to the phone portion of the band you um, and you want to use it for data or CW, you know, you might be out of, you know, the uh, the resonance might just be a little bit out of spec and your SWR a tad high, you can use the tuner to kind of increase your bandwidth. So plus, yeah. you know, it, it gives you an option, you know, um, say if you've got a 40 meter resonant antenna and you want to use it on 15 meters, put it on the tuner. So it's, you can, you can do that too. So Travis, you're a connoisseur of QRP. Um, I know you have an 817. I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> I have um, no idea where I got that from. <laughs> no, no, it just showed up. It just showed up one day, right? Some yeah, guy with a red jacket. Car, like somebody else that always <laughs> seems to find radios in their car. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What's what's your opinion uh, when you're working QRP? Do you normally try to go with a resident antenna, or do you use something like an NFAT and then try to uh, tune it out from there? When I'm at the campground, a lot of times what I try to do because I've got the space. You've seen my site. Is I try to put up something resonant and preferably broadbanded because me personally i i try to avoid the tuner it, i mean when you're running qrp you're not going to lose much to the tuner but mm -hmm. every little bit helps at times so me personally i try to avoid the tuner but i do get, agree with michael that it does add more versatility to your toolkit if you will so i have one i it's always with me but i mean when we were doing parks on the air last week uh what was that three weeks ago now I did not use a tuner. I took the time to manually tune my antenna anytime I moved around. Oh, we were also running 100 watts, between 50 and 100 watts. We weren't running. Right. Quite. Well, actually, when, when you and Michael were off on your adventure, adventure. You don't talk about the adventure. <laughs> I'm okay. not get an adventure. It's made the adventure on. Oh, when you well, guys we can talk were off doing whatever it was you were doing, <laughs> it's top secret. <laughs> I was I was actually running QRP for a little while and I was okay. I was making contacts with the with the Wolf River coil on 40 with five watts. Right. You know, and, and so one of the theories about it is that you can use a non-resident antenna on QRP because your reflected power is going to be so small that it's not really a big deal, even if you have some higher SWR. And then a tuner will be just fine. Uh, yet you do use some, um, you do lose a little power in the team uh, team matching network. Um, the thing you don't want to use with QRP is a trap antenna, is that those right. traps take up a lot of power. Oh, they and you're, you're really going to lose it on that. So resin antennas okay, are okay. A lot of guys swear by an end fed antenna for QRP. Um, go ahead and try it. The nice thing about an NFAT antenna is you probably only need one, and they're really easy to put up. Yeah, yeah, that they are. That's True. that's since I got that NFAT antenna earlier this summer, that's been my go-to antenna for tricky, tricky campground spots. So tricky camp. You know what? You should write a book for the AWRL. Antennas <laughs> and tricky campground spots. I'll buy one. Spots. <laughs> I'll buy one. Can I help co-author it. <laughs> Except, well, when you're in the National Forest, you can put up an 80-meter off-center fed dipole, too. Or so. a GMG special. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, last year, Travis put up a 200, what is it, 270-foot um, loop? 74 feet, I think. We wow. put up 274 foot of wire in the air and then fed it on with water line. On my yeah. site. I was having a blast with that antenna all summer. That is a lot of wire. That was the GLD special. GLD um, special. It yeah. was. It's an amazing talker, and I think you can get down to 160 on that, right? You can get down to 160. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're getting.
Thank you so much for the questions. If you keep sending them, we'll keep answering them. Feel free to leave your questions and comments down in the comment area below. I'll filter through them, and who knows, yours may end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. Our Q&A live streams happen on the first Thursday of the month, starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. I hope to see you there. For more articles and information, along with a full line of VHF and UHF antennas for sale, please check out my website at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content, and our patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. Well, give us that thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here. That's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.